Photosynthesis and cell respiration are two sides of the same coin. They are the central chemical reactions that power life and also cycle the actual matter throughout the, the ecosystems. 99.9% .9 of life on Earth relies on the sunlight that is captured by photosynthesis in order to power the process of making food, which plants, animals, and every organism in the, in the food web then uses uh, through cell respiration, breaks that down to make the energy that it actually needs to power its life. And then that way, energy flows through ecosystems. Meanwhile, matter cycles. And you can see that because all the things that cell respiration needs are made during photosynthesis and vice versa. Let's compare photosynthesis and cell respiration and contrast them in this video to do the fourth objective of this content assessment. Remember, mitochondria and chloroplasts are organelles which are at the center of this cycle. Mitochondria does cell respiration and photosynthesis is done by chloroplasts. This is happening inside of every single eukaryotic cell, which are the cells that have nucleuses in, in their membranes in throughout the life, the tree of life. Now, there are, of course, uh, aerobic bacteria, which are causes of mitochondria to do that outside of, you know, uh, eukaryotic cells. And there are also cyanobacteria that can do photosynthesis, and there are long distance causes of chloroplasts. But for the most part, you can think of it as a process that these two organelles are doing back and forth. Notice that the chloroplasts trap the energy of the sun to actually power the process of getting carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and putting it inside of a molecule such as glucose. And in doing so, they also break down water and make oxygen. Pretty convenient. Now, then the mitochondria actually takes in that glucose, breaks it down with the help of that oxygen to actually make out of the glucose carbon dioxide and out of the oxygen, water again. And in doing so, produces the chemical energy necessary for life. So as you can see, the energy flows from the sun through the chloroplast by photosynthesis and then through the mitochondria to break down that food to make chemical energy that is then used up by life. Meanwhile, glucose is made by chloroplast and then broken by mitochondria to make the carbon dioxide the chloroplast needed to make the glucose. And on the other hand, the, the water that is made by the mitochondria is used by the chloroplast to make oxygen, which the mitochondria needs. And in that sense, matter is cycling around. So I hope this makes it clear how these two processes are interrelated and very dependent on each other. Cell aspiration photosynthesis can also be seen as a related process when you look at the actual chemical formulas. Even the quantity of chemicals is the same, but backwards. You see how you need six carbon dioxide to do photosynthesis? You make six of those when you do cell respiration. You need six waters to do photosynthesis. You make six of those doing cell respiration. You need oxygen uh, to actually do cell respiration. You make those in photosynthesis. And the glucose that you make in photosynthesis is used up in cell respiration. And you can look at it the other way too. Do note, by the way, that the energy that's coming in in photosynthesis is sunlight. And that's not the same energy that's going to come out in cell respiration. You're going to make ATP and chemical energy is going to be used up by the cells. So energy does not cycle the way that the materials do. Energy flows from the sun through photosynthesis to the food through cell respiration back to chemical energy that is used up. So the energy is used up and flows through life and through the food web while the uh, materials are cycled back and forth between these two processes. Now let's go ahead and compare them. Notice that photosynthesis makes food for life, while the goal for cell aspiration is to make energy for life. Carbon dioxide and water, which are needed for photosynthesis, are actually produced during cell aspiration. And the sugar that is produced together with the oxygen during photosynthesis is needed for cell aspiration. But in a way, both processes involve energy and the same chemicals. Notice also that chloroplasts are the ones making the photosynthesis while mitochondria is the one doing the cell respiration. Photosynthesis makes food for all the ecosystems of the earth and trap carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, while cell respiration makes energy for life and release the carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. So in a way, photosynthesis limits the greenhouse effect by trapping carbon dioxide that's in the atmosphere. For thousands and thousands and millions of years, photosynthesis have done that, getting carbon dioxide produced by volcanoes, by wildfires, and by life, and transferring that back into uh, life in the form of sugar. Now, cell respiration releases that carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere uh, by breaking down the sugar. 
By the way, do note that plants that died a long time ago and became oil are now currently releasing the carbon dioxide as they're being burned by humans. And so uh, that's where the extra carbon dioxide that's recently being added to the atmosphere is all coming from, really from plants that trapped it a long time ago. Photosynthesis is also what's made all the oxygen that's in the atmosphere while soil respiration consumes it. And the reason that the amounts of oxygen can still stay abundant in our atmosphere is because uh, there are lots of plants doing extra food, producing way, way, way a lot more oxygen than they actually consume. Last but not least, photosynthesis needs energy, which comes in the form of light. And soil respiration makes energy in the form of ATP that is used up by the cells to, to perform all the chemistry of life. Do remember that plants, algae, and cyanobacteria do both processes. They also need cell respiration to break down the food that they make themselves. While animals, fungus, and most bacteria cannot actually make their own food, they actually have to break it down. All right. They are, by, they are, by the way, lots of types of bacteria that don't do either of these processes and do different kinds of chemical processes and live in extreme environments of the earth or anaerobic environments and, and rely on processes not connected to this. But that's the... 0.1% or a tiny amount of life that is not related to these processes. But even them, a lot of them, still, even if they act as decomposers, are still connected to the food web because they um, eat things that do these things. There are very few bacteria that are not connected in some form to the cycle of photosynthesis and cell respiration. Of course, few types, I would say, but since there's so many bacteria in the world, there's probably millions and millions of them of course um, i just mean comparatively speaking in terms of types now the cell respiration photosynthesis are therefore at the core of everything that life does and a very important process make sure you remember what each of them makes and how, and that what one makes is used out by the other and that that creates a cycle of matter while the energy flows from the sunlight to eventually being used up by animals and plants all across the food web to actually do the, the things that they do. I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you on the next video.